Far in the future, all federal and state prisons are owned by private companies. These organizations also own the lives of the prisoners and use them as entertainment. Many sick games, at the cost of human life, are played for people's amusement. At the beginning of the film, new inmates are being admitted into a federal prison in China. Everyone is lined up and asked about their names and crimes. Among the criminals is 20-year-old Ricky, who has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for assault and manslaughter. Ricky is not like the usual submissive inmates. He doesn't bother to listen to the guards and does what he wants to. They already do not like him, so when the metal detector rings because of Ricky, they take it as an opportunity to show their dominance. He is taken to the x-ray machine, which shows that he has bullets inside his body. The guards inquire why he didn't let the doctors take them out, to which he says that they're souvenirs from the person he killed. No one dares to talk back after the comment, and Ricky is led inside with the other inmates. The place is separated into four parts named after four directions. Each part is ruled by a different leader. The leaders even have the authority to terminate people's probation and work closely with the prison warden. One morning, a bully named Samuel is in the bathroom. He snatches a towel out of an elderly inmate named Omar, which eventually causes an argument. Samuel and his minions bully the poor man and break his nose. A guard comes to calm the situation, but upon seeing that Samuel is the perpetrator, he simply walks away. Ricky watches the incidents unfold from the door and sticks his foot out, causing Samuel to fall on a spiky piece of wood. Samuel's face is impaled on the spikes but he survives. The minions try to intimidate Ricky, but seeing that he is not scared of them, they resort to taking care of their master instead. A while later, Samuel's injuries are bandaged, but his will to take revenge does not die. He knows that he cannot beat Rocky on his own, so he hires the best assassin in the prison, the Mad Dragon. He is a morbidly obese maniac who has killed over 50 inmates. Currently, Mad Dragon is in solitary confinement, so Samuel pulls some strings to get him out. At night, Mr. Omar's dead body is found hanging from the hallway ceiling. It is revealed that Samuel terminated his probation and made it so he would have to live in prison forever. The poor man was arrested for hitting someone with his car. The man who was injured was a police officer, which is why Omar got the longest jail sentence possible. For years, he waited to meet his family again, and when he was told he would never get to see them, he committed the unthinkable. The next morning, Mad Dragon is let out of confinement. He approaches Ricky in the bathroom and slams him into the wall. Ricky, in turn, punches him once and guts him with bare hands. The giant falls to the floor as his intestines slide out of his body. Similarly, when Samuel tries to interfere, Ricky kills him by punching a hole in his stomach. The entire place is covered in blood, but the guards are calm as usual. Before they bring Ricky away, the leader of the West Wing, named Hai, approaches him. Hai invites Ricky to his gang, since he has admirable fighting skills. Ricky doesn't care about the lousy gang system, but refrains from refusing the order out loud. Then, we are shown a flashback of the time Ricky was still in school. He was living in an orphanage since his parents died when he was in elementary school. One afternoon, he goes to visit their graves and comes across his uncle. The man is a master of kung fu, with vast knowledge of all forms of fighting techniques. He sees real talent in Ricky and offers to be his master. Starting that day, they train every day in the graveyard. Ricky even drops out of school to focus on the training. Every session, his limits are tested, and when he manages to break a stone with his chest, the training is complete. Back in the present, Ricky is taken to the assistant warden of the prison named Hook. The man has a hook for his right hand and a prosthetic eye. After being told what Ricky did to the other inmates, Hook glows red in anger. He stabs Ricky's hand to the table, asking him to reveal how he got so powerful. When he doesn't speak, Hook brings out a picture of Ricky's girlfriend and insults her. An angered Ricky breaks the table with his injured hand and threatens Hook to mind his own business before walking away. One year ago, Ricky was the happiest he has ever been, and the only reason was his girlfriend, Fei Fei. They were deeply in love and looking to get married after she graduates, but then came a dreadful night that changed everything. While returning home, Fei Fei came across a gangster selling opium to school kids to use as drugs. She is caught spying on them and brought to the leader of the gang. He lusts over her beauty and tries to force himself on her, but Fei Fei manages to escape. However, while trying to run away, she falls off the building and dies. It creates a huge dent in Ricky's life and makes him hungry for revenge. 
Hence, he finds the gang leader one night without his minions. The man shoots Ricky several times and doesn't miss a single shot, but Ricky doesn't feel the pain of gunshots over the pain of losing Fei Fei. He punches the man in the skull and ends his life in a single blow. He is later sentenced to prison, but doesn't regret his actions at all. The next day, all the inmates of the West Wing attack Samuel's minion now that he doesn't have anyone to protect him. They are stopped by the West Wing leader, Hai, who wants to assert his dominance since everyone is praising Ricky. He hits a man named Kang and chains him to a pole in front of the entire prison. Then he asks everyone if they are willing to save Kang and go against him. The inmates want to help their friend, but are terrified of being the leader. Hai thinks that he has made his point until Ricky comes forward to oppose him. They get into a fight that turns into a bloodied match pretty soon. Hai plays unfair and uses a powder to blind Ricky. He also cuts a vein in Ricky's arm and paralyzes it, but Ricky soon overcomes the obstacles by cleaning his eyes with water and tying his vein into a knot. After that, he smacks High on the back of his head, which makes his eye fall out. High sees that he is about to lose, so he makes a cut in his abdomen and brings out his intestines. He wants to use them to strangle Ricky, but the plan fails. In the end, High dies, and Ricky celebrates his victory by bringing Kang down. Suddenly, the leaders of the other three wings arrive in the field. They protect the assistant warden, but do not attack Ricky just yet. The next day, Ricky sees a man named So sitting alone outside. He sits beside the guy and finds out that his tongue was cut off by one of the leaders. He cannot talk, so Ricky gives him his flute. So, in turn, hands him opium leaves. On investigating where they came from, Ricky discovers that the South Wing leader and Hook are secretly growing opium in the South Wing of the prison, which is sold to school students. Since Fei Fei's death was also related to opium, Ricky makes it his mission to end the farm. Later, the gang leaders get a hint of So's friendship with Ricky. To teach him a lesson, they skin him to death and throw his corpse outside for everyone to see. Ricky is devastated by the poor guy's death. At night, he goes to the south wing and sets fire to the entire opium farm. The fire grows, burning all of the stock. The south leader attacks him in anger, and a fight starts between the two. Ricky is overpowering him until the other leaders arrive and attack him all at once. The south leader is the brain of the group. The north leader specializes in string art and can slice people in half with a roll of thread. Meanwhile, the east leader is the most powerful one of them all. Using their combined fighting skills, they manage to capture Ricky and lock him in a room. The East Leader unknowingly enters the room to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. He regrets the decision when the room starts filling up with wet cement. It was Hook's plan to kill Ricky, but he manages to save both his and the leader's life. Then, he challenges Hook to be a man and fight one-on-one, -on -one. but soon, the cement in his body hardens and restricts his movement. As a result, Ricky is yet again captured. The next day, the warden of the prison returns from his trip to Hawaii. He has brought his spoiled son, Wong, with him. Because of his weight, Wong trips on the carpet. As a result, the guy who rolled the carpet out is killed. The warden treats the inmates as mere insects to be stomped on and only cares about his son. Upon finding out about the destroyed opium farm, his blood boils in anger. Hook brings him to a cell where Ricky is tied up to the ceiling. He is still covered in concrete, but upon seeing him, he flexes the dirt off of his body. Then he attacks the warden, promising to punish him for trading opium. He is soon stopped by the East Leader, who locks Ricky's hands and proceeds to beat him up for the warden and his son's entertainment. Amidst the torture, someone mentions Fei Fei's name, which brings Ricky back to his normal self. He frees his hands and uppercuts into East's throat, killing him in an instant. I feel like I got uppercutted in the throat too. Before Ricky can celebrate, the ceiling made of metal starts moving down. He prevents it from crushing him and escapes, much to everyone's surprise. In the following scene, he is kept inside a hole in the ground, and the prisoners are asked to bury him. They reluctantly do as told, scared for their lives. Ricky is only given bamboo to help him breathe. He stays there for over a week, thinking about Fei Fei every minute. Then, on the eighth day, the warden orders to bring his dead body out so everyone gets to see what happens to people who go against the rules of the prison. Ricky is pulled out, but to everyone's surprise, he is perfectly fine and can even do acrobatics. Everyone is impressed by his skill, which makes the South Leader furious. Alongside hatred, he is also jealous of Ricky's mastery. When everyone is distracted, he knocks Ricky out in one go and captures him. 
After that, Ricky is held in a death trap that will kill him if he tries to move. The warden is impressed by Ricky's tolerance. He asks him to join the gang, but Ricky, in turn, insults him. This is followed by a brutal torture inflicted on him by the South leader. He puts blades into Ricky's mouth and punches him repeatedly. When he finally stops, Ricky spits the blades into the warden's face, refusing to give up. At night, one of Ricky's supporters brings him food with a message that asks him not to give up yet. However, the assistant warden gets hint of this and kills the guy with a hook in his throat. He then goes to Ricky's room to show him the aftermath of the death, but is in turn attacked. Hook's supporter is punched in the skull, which breaks in half because of the impact. After that, Hook's only eye is stabbed and his hand is cut off. All the prisoners riot against the warden and fight the guards when they try to interfere. Somewhere else, the the warden and his son are in the kitchen area. The warden hears an inmate complaining about the food his son eats. To teach the man a lesson, he puts his hand inside the meat grinder, making a bloodied mess in the process. All of a sudden, Ricky enters the room and takes a stand against him. They are joined by South and North leaders who attack Ricky. Another fight ensues between the three, but this time, Ricky manages to overpower both of them. The South leader is killed after all of his limbs are torn off. The one other runs away in fear, and at last, only Ricky and the Warden are left alive. It seems to be a one-way fight before the Warden somehow turns into an ugly giant and attacks Ricky. The fight goes on for some time before Ricky pushes him into the meat grinder until only his head is left unshredded. Following the death, Ricky walks outside with the head to announce his victory. In the last scene, he breaks the prison wall and all the prisoners escape. Everyone show some love in the comments for the editors today for all that crazy violence they had to cut around. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.